All right, in this video, I'm going to tell you how to enlarge an existing subwoofer hole for your speaker. If you ever buy a subwoofer box and you also buy a sub and the sub is too big for the box, you're going to have to trim some of the box away. You're going to have to enlarge the hole. I'm going to show you how to use this handheld Makita router along with these two bits to perfectly enlarge the hole of your subwoofer box so that your speaker fits. One speaker box, one Rockford Fosgate speaker. The hole's not big enough. All right, for this speaker, 12 inch, the mounting diameter should be 11 and a quarter inches. However, when I measure, it's only 11. The diameter of the hole now is only 11 inches. So I need to increase it by one quarter. So that means I need to take half of that off of the whole entire circumference and that will give me an increase in the diameter of a quarter so I need to basically router away an eighth of an inch around the whole diameter and that will give me a total of a quarter inches bigger diameter so in order to do that I'm gonna use this Makita router this is a little hand router and you can adjust the depth okay and then lock that in. And the specific bit that I'm using is known as a round over router bit. And I'm using the smallest one possible and it's the 1 8 inch round over bit. Now, I wish I could just take a 16th of an inch off because I think a 16th would do it, but I have to go with an eighth because that's the minimum that I can, that I can take off is an eighth inch. I can't take a 16th inch off using this method. It has to be at least an eighth inch that I'm taking out of there. So this is going to require two passes. We're going to use the round over bit first to round a basically a shoulder into it. And then we're going to come back behind that with this bit, which is a trimming bit. And I'll show you how to do that next. So we're going to be putting this in the router next. But first we're going with the round over bit. Now let me explain exactly what I'm going to do here. When this bit cuts into the edge of this wood, it's going to leave a shelf and that shelf is going to be created by this edge of the blade right here. And that shelf right here is what this next bit is going to ride on. The bearing of this next bit is going to ride on. Okay. So now I'm going to protect the surface with some blue tape and then we'll get started. There's a close-up of what we're cutting. All right, now we're gonna take the round over bit out and we're gonna put in this trimming bit. This is a quarter inch shank it's a one half inch diameter and it's one inch cutting depth which is enough for this box now to show you what we're doing here with this next pass and the reason why we made this initial little little edge right here is we need something for this bearing see this bearing right here this is a bearing this rolls it's a ball bearing and that bearing is going to ride against that lip that we just cut and it's basically going to stop the blade from continuing any further in this direction because right now it can only go so far and then the bearing is going to hit that edge and it's going to stop it okay so it's going to ride along that edge and then we're going to router just like this and basically any material below that edge is going to be completely chewed away so the best way to kind of look at it is in action after i get it done so I'll do a partial cut so you can see what's going on and you'll see how this bit will stop at that lip that we just cut and it will only allow 
this blade to cut as far as that lip actually extends into the wood. Okay, now we've got the trimmer blade installed, the trimmer bit, but it's not at the right depth. Okay, so depth is crucial on this. I need to adjust, adjust the depth and I need to adjust it so that the bearing, the top bearing, comes down below, below the level of this plane right here, okay? And I want about that much or so. Okay, so we want just enough bearing showing right there so that that bearing rolls along this edge, this inside edge right here, okay? In other words, if, for example, we were to try routering like this, okay, what would happen is this bit would just cut all the way across the box. It would just literally just cut in and it would, you would have no guide. It would just slip all the way as far as you wanted to go. Uh, on the other hand, if you had the bearing too far, then you'd have a situation to where the bearing would be rolling on this lower, thicker portion and nothing would be taken off. Okay, so we have to adjust this so that just enough of that bearing shows. Probably about that much. I would say about an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch or so. Then we're going to lock it down, okay? We'll know right away if we're at the wrong depth because it won't cut right. But anyway, let me go ahead and cut, do a cut and then I'll show you where we're at. Okay, so now we can see the two, the two passes. We can see the first pass, which is the rounder, and that gave us this nice little flat edge for the next bearing to ride on. And then the next pass, the bearing was riding on this edge while the cutting blade was cutting the rest of this material off. And in total, it's basically taking a, a, a total of one eighth of an inch off of the whole entire edge, which will give us a total of a quarter of an inch diameter increase. Now, let me show you something really important here. I actually made a tiny little mistake. It's not a big deal, but... That was caused... I got a little lazy, and as I came around, what I did was I lifted just a little bit up. And what that did is that brought that bearing off of that hard edge and into space. And then that allowed the bit to just go wherever. Because if, if we lift the bearing up away from the surface to where it's no longer grabbing on this upper edge right here, because it's only got a little bit of grab, if we lift it just a little bit, this bit can just wander all the way out. And so I made a little boo-boo right here, but that's okay. I'm going to blow this thing off with a leaf blower and then before I bring my speaker out here. Nice. Now there is a little bit of wobble. So for all you guys that are like perfectionists about getting these perfectly, I knew this was gonna be bigger. I knew it was gonna be a bigger hole, but that's okay. The main thing is I just wanted this thing sitting flat. And now it's definitely sitting flat. So I'm gonna drill the holes and mount this thing. <laughs> 